you, me, others at the gym, the people you see on social media, actors in movies, the remarkable individuals you see in the news, we're not all the same. When I started weightlifting, which was, I think it's coming eight years now, believe it or not, I was obsessed with the, you know, the athletes we see on the world stage. I mean, back then it was Apti Akhodov, Klokov, Lu Jun, just to name a few. I was obsessed with their technique. Not only were the weights that they were lifting were phenomenal, their technique was perfect. They were able to keep the bar very close. The snatch, the clean and jerk, their back squats, pretty much perfect. And that's why I took up weightlifting. It was the perfect combination of strength, flexibility, power, determination through the mind as well as the body, and techniques. Very technical lifts. I mean, you don't see everyone snatching and clean and jerking. So when I do the lifts, I feel special. I feel I feel I feel a bit unique. But when I watch those weightlifters. I mean, there were, there were YouTube channels like Hook Grip, um, All Things Gym. Those are the two like OG weightlifting channels. Now you got Weightlifting House. You got so many video, so many video footages of um, weightlifters, even in the training hall in slow mo. All these new lifters have popped up. Never even heard of them from all over the world, all these different countries. And you can uh, you can look at their technique, how perfect it is, and yeah, it's something I really want to emulate. I really want to be able to squat deep, nice and deep. I really want to have that perfect technique, being able to keep that bar close, get really deep into that squat position, catch the bar low, be really fast and quick, as well as being strong. I think being strong was the came second to having perfect technique, which was really deep squat, really fast, powerful snatch, really fast, powerful clean and juke, and really deep squat, perfect squat, vertical, upright, the bar. When you look at the side view of a squat, the bar never moves forward. That's what I wanted. So when I first started, I'd obsessed by taking lots of lots of videos of myself lifting. And it didn't look the same compared to these you know, athletes of the world stage. That's what I've written here. Athletes of the world stage. It didn't look the same. And like I said, I, I started weightlifting eight years ago. I had a bit of a break for about a year in between. Now I'm back on it. So I've been lifting consistently, consistently over six, for six months now since I've had my break. And... When I was starting eight years ago, uh, I'd I'd shoot lots of videos of myself lifting, um, and <laughs> it was a uh, yeah, it was funny seeing that I was nowhere near, I was it was not even similar to how I'd lift, you know how those professionals would lift, even people in my country, you know, in New Zealand with some phenomenal weightlifters in New Zealand, I couldn't lift like them, you know, the the best ones, and. Yeah, even after I think probably now my lifting has been as best it's ever it's ever it's ever been since I've had a, a proper coach. So when I started weightlifting, I didn't have a a coach. I just watched YouTube videos. I think Cl Clarence Kennedy, yeah, that's another YouTube guy who kind of got me onto one of the people who inspired me to do weightlifting. Um, you see him on a uh, on YouTube. You see some tutorials on YouTube. Greg Everett, um, California Strength. They had tutorials on how to snatch and clean and jerk and um. I just start there. I just start watching YouTube videos and emulate it at the commercial gym. So at the time I was at university, at the university gym, I'd, I'd practice how to do the the snatch, the clean and jerk. It was actually um, starting strength. Mark Ripoto got me into the power clean, and that led led on to the Olympic lifts. And at that time, no coaching, just learning on my own, and lots of videos. <laughs> And just seeing, I wasn't like these professional lifters. Like the technique was off. Whenever I squatted, the bar would always go forward, always go forward. And recently, when I started coming back into weightlifting, like I said, six months now, solid weightlifting, um, I made an Instagram post, and um, the post, uh, some something on the lines of, "I'm disappointed in my squat because I was squatting and the barbell was still going forward. I was doing front squats." And my coach actually saw it. So I've actually got an online coach now. And since getting an online coach, it has changed the game for me. Um, 
So when I started weightlifting, I was doing it by myself at the university gym. Then I moved to a weightlifting club. I got a little bit of coaching there, but um, eventually it was just me lifting at a club. I went to another club and same thing. It wasn't proper dedicated coaching. It was just we're all weightlifting and kind of critiquing each other's form. So no official kind of, no official coaching until I got a proper online coach. And that's where my lifting dramatically improved. Um, but I've been talking for a while now. This is my history. And the, the point that when I made that Instagram post, what my coach said, I can coach now, he said that we all lift different. We all lift differently. And that's a life lesson. <laughs> we're, we're all different. And but I'm different in weightlifting that I've got different limbs. My mobility is different. My flexibility is different. So we can't compare ourselves to others. Someone could have, I've got pretty long legs and someone could have shorter legs. They're going to be, they're going to have an easier time staying upright. I don't, I'm not very mobile. I'm not very flexible. And someone else who's more flexible is able to get into those positions much better. I mean, I can improve my flexibility and mobility, but it's really important to realize that we can't compare ourselves, especially with limb length. I can't make myself have shorter limbs. And you've got to make sure you're improving. And that's where I come back to that first point that we're not all the same. And that's where also the power of coaching comes in as well. So the amount of pay for coaching is not much. I hope he doesn't, I hope my coach doesn't watch this video and up his prices, that would suck. But it's not much. And my lifting has improved. I've improved more in the six months than I ever have in my, my in terms of my technique. It's improved so much since the start. And that's what my coach sent me. He sent me a video of when we first started when I was doing my squats for the first time. And he sent me a video of my squats a few months later. And you know, I know it's a huge improvement just in myself, not comparing myself to those people in the world stage, the, perf the perfect lifters, but just seeing a huge improvement in myself. The bar wasn't going as forward as it was in the beginning. And that's amazing. I mean, I would never known that if I was training by myself or training with, you know, just friends who do weightlifting, but not a proper coach, I would never have picked up on that. And the programming, it's, 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 it's so little money for the value I get. Um, I mean, I get programs sent to me weekly. So that's, that's less friction in terms of, I don't have to think about a program myself. Someone's giving me a plan to do. And I also get a technical analysis. I can send videos over and then he will tell me what to do. They'll tell me what to do. They'll, they'll, give, they'll give me exact cues on what to do. And the next level, this is an online coach, by the way. And the, and the next level on that is getting live coaching because you can give feedback directly like while you're warming up. But the but what I can do is I can send videos at the end of the day and I get cues. And that's a really good point because you don't, you don't develop any bad habits because if you develop bad habits early, they're really hard to, you spend more time day down track trying to fix those bad habits. But man, the, my coach gave me a, a good life lesson that we can't compare ourselves to others. Another point he made was, because when he gives me cues, uh, the cues are um, usually the same and I feel bad that I'm not listening to my coach, but he would say the same thing. Like we can't compare ourselves to Lasha who just can snatch perfectly, can and jerk nearly perfectly, good technique. And that's where hard work is. You're going to do, they have to do the same things. There's no secret. You got to just keep doing the same things again and again and again to get better. And that's where your practice, it's not just turning up, but it's having perfect practice. And it's hard doing that, but you're training by yourself. So at the moment, guys, I'm training by myself. If you have that team environment with the coach, with people weightlifting, doing the same thing as you really boosts your, your ability to lift everyone coming together. But I want to come back to that comparison. Like we all, I, I know about, I know about, you know, the comparison is the thief of joy. Uh, whoever, whoever said that quote, um, you can't compare your yourself to, you, you need to compare yourself to your previous self, not to everyone's current state. And, you know, you're seeing everyone's highlight reel on Instagram, social media, in the news, you're seeing everyone's highlight reels. This is your raw footage. You see all the failures in your life. But it's hard. Like I, I know this stuff. It's just hard because you don't know where you are. Like you don't know if you're going, be falling behind. If you're too far ahead. Like you need that barometer. You need to compare yourself to others. And that's where I thought about. You need to, you need to compete against others. You don't compare yourself to others. It's, it's okay to compete against other people, but never compare. 
Um, I went to North Islands recently, and um, so that's a competition. And I realized that <laughs> I think I came second to last. But yeah, there were guys there who were just lifting. They're amazing lifters, man. And when I was at North Islands, I was sort of questioning, why am I doing weightlifting? I'm 29 years old. Should I be starting a family? Why, why am I doing uh, weightlifting? You know, lifting weights, and I'm not not I'm not that strong. I'm just a average guy, an average dude. And there was a video given uh, produced by Sicker Strength, and they said that you know weightlifting isn't therapy. So I'm not I'm not doing this for my mental health, really. Well, I can't expect weightlifting to improve my mental health. Well, I can't expect weightlifting to fix any mental health problems. I'm not saying that I have any mental health problems. But they also gave really good advice, the guys at Seeker Strength. They said that sports is inherently unfair. It's unfair. <laughs> and comparing yourself to others is not going to make you feel any better. Why you think for me, I come back to those things. It's an amazing display of strength, flexibility, determination. Though that's why I do it. That's why I go to the gym every day. I grind every day. Not because it's therapy. But it does improve my life in some way. It is beneficial to my life. It makes me stronger. It makes me healthier. It's something I do until I want until I I die. That's 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 what I want weightlifting. And I really want to. A goal of mine is, as you guys know, is I want to be a digital nomad. But I also want to be able to be a digital nomad and do weightlifting at the same time. I don't know how that's going to work. But it's something I really want to accomplish. It's a really big goal I want to achieve. And. I, this reminds me of a time in Christchurch when I was living in Christchurch. I'd go to work. I'd train, I think, six, six days, six days, six to five days a week. I'd go to work, go to the gym, go home, eat food, and go to bed at like 1 a.m. because I was pathetic. I used to scroll through YouTube, watch YouTube, waste time for going to bed, and I'd wake up at 7. I'd just make it to work, so I started work at 8, and 8.30, and I'd turn up at 8.35 or 8, 8.33 or something. I would just make it to work sometimes. That was my life. I was miserable. It was work, gym, repeat. And the weekends, I was all lonely. That's how life was back then, guys. But <laughs> life's better now. I'm working part-time and I'm doing YouTube, doing, doing things I love, living with my parents. I don't know if that's a step forward or a step back, but I'm doing what I love. So the point is today, I just want to make a point that we're all different. We can't compare ourselves to others. We have to look at our past selves and just see if we're actually improving. That's how we, we make sure we're improving. And it's okay to compete against other people, but don't compare yourself to other people. Because competition brings out the best in us. Comparison brings out, brings out our negative side. Now, guys, I want you to think about your goals. What are your goals? My um, I had this goal of qualifying for weightlifting nationals, and that's, that hasn't happened in... <laughs> Since I started weightlifting, it's been eight years, remember. Um, what about looking good naked? That'd be a kind of cool goal, right? Because <laughs> at, at this present moment, I don't, I don't feel like I look like who's someone, I don't look like someone who lifts weights. Get the girls right. Because I, I think my personality is going to make it. So all this content on YouTube is talking about um, you know, you got to got to have a six pack abs. You got to have ten percent body fat, just so you can succeed. I think if you want if you want to perform well on this platform, you need to you need to look good. You need to have six pack abs. If you want to have the girl of your dreams, you need to, you need to look good too. You need to have good six pack abs. I don't I don't know if those are my goals, guys. I don't know if that's my my dream. I want to be able to squat 200 kilos. That's my big goal. I want, to be, I, want to be, I want to be able to snatch 100 kilos. I want to be able to clean and jerk 130 kilos. I also want a, uh, a lifelong partner as well. <laughs> so I don't know if you need to be if you need to have six pack abs for that. And I also want to be able to travel and work out. Like I said, guys, digital nomad and be able to travel the world as well as going to the gym. How cool would that be? What about you guys? I really want to know your goals. What are your goals? And how am I going to achieve those goals? So that's, you know, I've got an online coach. Good coaching. Um, 
in terms of sleep, I need to get to bed on time. And it's currently what 11, quarter past 11, and I plan to get up at 6.30 tomorrow. So I need to get you know, some good sleep. I need to eat good food. Injuries are a big problem. So right now, I've got a dodgy left knee sort of at the moment. So I need to focus on, you know, not getting injuries because injuries really stop you from, because it's long term, right? You know, if, if, if you're injured, you're better off taking time off because you're focusing on that long term, that long term goal of sustaining your body so it can get better. Because if you get injured and the injury is really bad, then you've you got to take six months off, three months off where you're not at your optimum and you can't grow. So avoiding injuries is, is a good idea. And if you are close to injury, because it's a hobby, I'm a hobby, I'm a hobbyist, right? I'm not an athlete. There's no need for me to train through my injuries. I can always take it a bit easy. But another thing too is I think if you're doing weightlifting, you're going to be sore all the time. You're never going to be, it's, it's, it's a price of not being on the couch. You're going to have these injuries. You're going to be sore. You're going to have sore knees. And that's inevitability apparently. So it's, it's, you need to know your body. You need to know like if you're injured or you're just, just suffering from a bit of a soreness. And I think coming back to, you know, how I'm achieving these goals, these goals are really for me. Nobody, nobody really cares about my, my goals, but me. And I don't think it's about achieving those big goals, guys. It's about the journey of striving towards those goals. And it's also important not to compare yourself to others. Coming back to the theme of the video, don't compare yourself to others. Have your big goals, big dreams, and do it just for you. And always compare yourself to your past. Because if you're going, if you're doing, if you're if you're on the journey of achieving your goals, you're always going to be better than you were back then. Unless you unless you have no big goals and you don't achieve want to achieve anything. I hope you guys enjoyed this Iran Durich, and I hope I said that correctly because you said my name so well. <laughs> I hope I can return that favor. I hope you enjoyed this Iran Durich inspired video. Squat every day. It's absolutely amazing seeing um, this man squat almost a thousand days. So we'll be celebrating that. Um, and let me know what you guys think in the, in the comments down below if you enjoyed this kind of format of video. I'm just trying to change things up and try and find a style that actually works and something that everyone enjoys. And I hope you find this video useful to you. And just remember, we're all different. We're not all the same. So as always, guys, stay focused and talk soon.